the op amp integrator performs mathematical integration and requires nothing more than an op amp and a few passive components. Integration can be accomplished by using a typical inverting op amp configuration, but with a capacitor in the feedback path instead of a resistor. Consider the following for our analysis. The virtual short ensures that the voltage at the inverting input terminal is always zero volts. This means the current flowing toward the inverting input terminal depends only on the input voltage and the input resistance. Assume that no current flows into the op-amps input terminals, so the current through the input resistor is equal to the current through the feedback capacitor. The voltage as a function of time across a capacitor is proportional to the integral with respect to time of the current through the capacitor. Since one of the capacitor's terminals is connected to ground through the virtual short, the magnitude of the output voltage will be equal to the magnitude of the voltage across the capacitor. Thus the output voltage is proportional to the integral of the input current, and the input current is proportional to the input voltage. This means that the overall circuit produces an output voltage that is proportional to the integral of the input voltage. The full derivation is available at the link in the description. In summary though, the output voltage of the op-amp integrator is proportional to the negative integral of the input voltage, and the constant of proportionality is the feedback capacitance multiplied by the input resistance. However, with this configuration, offset voltage and input bias current both cause DC current flow in the feedback path and will cause the capacitor's voltage to increase until the op-amp reaches saturation, even when the input is shorted to ground. By adding a resistor in parallel with the feedback capacitor, we provide a consistent path for these DC currents to flow. This is a simple and effective solution, but it comes with two side effects. First, the DC currents will create a small voltage drop across the feedback resistor, which adds an undesirable error component to the output voltage. Second, the feedback resistor affects the frequency response of the circuit in such a way that the integrator becomes less mathematically ideal. And unfortunately, these two side effects react in opposing ways to the value of the feedback resistor. A smaller feedback resistance generates lower DC error voltage, but greater degradation of the frequency response. And a larger feedback resistance generates more DC error voltage, but less frequency response degradation. For more details, check out the link in the description or visit allaboutcircuits.com.